So I'm going to go ahead and throw this disclaimer out. Um, this video will not be as good as I wanted it to be. I had notes for the last three days and videos that I took last, well, three, between 3 and 5 a.m. this morning, all deleted. I had to take my phone to the Apple store to fix a vibration issue and everything was gone. So I'm pretty much going off the top right now because I'm not going to do all that all over again. But we'll see how it goes. Here we go. So last week I saved the best for last. This week, <laughs> I'm not doing that. So like I said, we're gonna start from the top. And at the top is yours truly, 350 megawatts coming at you with 238.4 points this week. Led by my main man, AJ Green, 41 points. High score of the week. My favorite player. What else needs to be said about this team? They're coming at you from all angles. Just when you think this person might not be this, the next person steps up and, you know, the rest is history. I won't brag too much about myself. We'll move on to party all the time. Peyton Manning, what are you going to do about that, Sid? What are you going to do? He's He doesn't look like the old Peyton Manning. Definitely doesn't look like he was worth giving me Aaron Rodgers for, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna kill you for that too much. You know, you're a rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, three weeks, no 100-yard games, no touchdowns. Wow, Julio Jones is holding it down, but he's got no help. No help. 32 points. You would think that he might have more than 152, but he does not. Um, Calvin Johnson is a name that used to strike fear in fantasy opponents, defensive coordinators, cornerbacks, safeties, everybody. Now, man, you look at Calvin Johnson and you're expecting eight to nine points. If he has 15, it's really a surprise. I know it's not just me that feels that way. Manuel Sanders, Travis Kelsey, both had decent days. Just doesn't matter. 152 was not a bad week. It's just, it's just now 239. So thanks again for playing, Cedric. Moving on. ESPN called this the matchup of the week, and boy, were they wrong. Man, I must say, I must say, Detroit Homeless is looking pretty damn good. Larry Fitzgerald, wow. I mean... 27 points this week. I believe he had 30 some odd points last week. It's like he's gone back to 2008, what, 2009 on us, man. He's out here straight balling. Who would have guessed that this year Steve Smith and Larry Fitzgerald will both be top five wide receivers? It's insane. But that production has helped take Homeless to 3 and 0. He blew out Headhunters, which was expected by most. Um, Jimmy Graham did a good job of shutting me up. A nice little game. He had 14 points versus Chicago. Nice nice week for him. Jamar Charles got getting some garbage points last night. Helped him out even more, you know, keeping them points up. You want to keep scoring well. It's another game. Sean put up over 160 points. And I got to admit, they're looking pretty good, man. They're looking really, really good. On the flip side, you got Taylor Headhunters now. He's got to be thinking every week, who do I start? Matthew Stafford? Or Blake Bortles. I mean, <laughs> that's what his team has come to. I mean, this is the guy who won it all last year and then traded all of his players away. Crazy. Sean said it was insane, and everybody else thought it was crazy. He was the only one thought he was actually making, you know, doing something good when he got rid of his championship winning team. Well, here we go. We're looking at Matt Jones with a nice .8. Uh, you know, you got to love that instead of having Le'Veon Bell, who he did acquire, and then quickly traded him away. Uh, Doug Martin with 4.6. Odell Beckham had a respectable day. Uh, what is this? I'm sorry. Pop-up came up. Uh, Odell Beckham had a respectable day. Sammy Watkins with 3.9. Sad. Demarius you know, he's starting to get there, but, you know, somebody thought that Peyton Manning was going to suck this year, so they gave away Demarius. I'd say that was pretty good thinking. Uh, you know, his team just, they got to figure it out. They're not good right now, but maybe they'll start gelling later in the season. Let's keep it going. So, again, ESPN was wrong because this was the game of the week. Just one question for you lobsters. Just one question, man. I know you had a big week. 180 is a, I mean, very respectable number. That's a win most weeks. Most weeks, 180 points will probably be high score. Obviously, it sucks that you didn't were not able to win this week, but 
Julius Randle, how do you leave him on the bench knowing that they have no choice over there but to run the ball? It just seems to me that you would want to go ahead and get him out there. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, though. I guess any of us could have made that same mistake. I mean, you went, you had some good, some good scores. Steve Smith, like I just said, thirty five points, thirty five point six points. I mean, right now he's ranked. Oh, I'm sorry, he's ranked number six. But last two weeks he's had thirty five and seventeen. So fifty two points over the last two weeks. How can you knock him? Can't really find anything negative to say about your team this week, man. Just hope. Hope you find some quarterback uh, replacement. Hope you find a good replacement. Switch it over to you win, then you lose some. Adrian Peterson finding the fountain of youth. Quan Alexander. Where did this guy come from? Tyron Matthew. Wow. Big weeks. His, I want to say his whole defense scored 120 points. Ah. Uh, Damn it, I wish I had my notes. I feel like I had did the calculations, and I want to say his defense alone scored 120 points. I want to say that Drew Bastard only ended up with 117. Yes, yes, 117. So the defense of Winston outscored the entire team of Bastard. But we'll get on, uh, you know, we'll get on to how bad Bastard is a little bit later. But congratulations, Winston. He moved on to two and one, dropped two hundred and three, which would usually be the high score of the week. But you know, you know what happened after with that. Um, good, good deal. Looks like that uh, Adrian Peterson for Paul Puss Destiny deal worked out for everybody. Glad I can help you get on the map. That's about it for you two. Good week. Let's see what happens next week. Keep it going. Battle of the Dots in series: Clips versus Aces. Let's check it out. In the Battle of the Dotsons, Brian came out on top this week. Um, his best player, in my opinion, was Muhammad Wilkerson. 17 points, 11 tackles on the defensive line. You just don't see that hardly ever. I can't say every, every week. You hardly ever see 11 tackles from a defensive lineman. That is very, very good. Obviously, James Jones was the high scorer, but his 22 wasn't, wasn't as good, in my opinion. But it was a good game, nonetheless. You got to start wondering, though, man, if you're Brian, what's going on with Andrew Luck? He's throwing intercept, two interceptions every week, minimum two, week one, three, week two, then two again last week versus Tennessee. And no Drew Brees. I guess he going to start starting Mariota or Johnny Manziel. I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens in the future, but we're going to flip that over. Come on over, take a look at the other Dotson. My main man, Eric. How you doing, Eric, man? Ah, uh, see, you're now one and two, but it's okay. Your division will keep you in it for a long time. But uh, anyway, David Harris, 15 points, your second highest performer, 27 from Keenan Allen. I got to I gotta say, though, Chris Ivory, zero wasn't your fault. If Just in case anybody didn't know, they said he was active. They just decided to give him no touches none at all well i don't know what was the point then he could have he might have been able to get greg olsen in there who knows maybe make a little bit more noise maybe make that change along with a couple other changes but ah rough week what can you do no can you do it's um it's just one of those one of those weeks again i had a little bit more but my fucking notes uh, let's take a look at your bench while i got a minute ruben randall yeah you wouldn't have that's not something any of us would have done, so I guess I can't really argue with that. Just Greg Olson. That's the only thing. Greg Olson. But I guess you still would have lost, so it doesn't really matter. But good win, Brian. Keep it going for the last matchup. This right here was the only man less impressive than Bastard this week. Now, most of us in here are Detroit Lions fans, and... Most of us were very disappointed in the team as a whole. Not just terrible Darius Slay, just the team as a whole. But I use Darius Slay because he had the most bark with the smallest bite. And I don't think anyone bit smaller than Bastard this week. 117 points. last The last two weeks combined for Bastard, I just outscored this week myself. 
Not trying to brag, just trying to point out that this guy, he's got some work to do. And usually this is around a time where Baxter starts trying to fire or sell, but who are we buying? Who are we buying on this team right now? We're looking at Teddy Bridgewater, four points. That's single digits for him, I believe. Oh, no, that's only one time. The other time he had 11. We had another game with an interception and no touchdowns. What uh, What is he doing? Jeremy Hill. Jeremy Hill, I do not blame you for, Drew. Cincinnati basically promised that he was going to be lead dog. He is not doing that. I don't know what the problem is. I'm sorry. I really am. But I don't know what you're going to do. I guess you can try to get rid of Preston Brown. You know, but even, even that might be hard to do because you're probably going to want something a little too steep for him. So I don't know, man. Good luck. Good luck. I hope you figure it out. Hope you figure it out. Jerry Macklin saved you from a whole lot more trash talk, though. Better believe that. But on the other side, the return of Le'Veon Bell, 19.2. He's I uh, got a feeling that he's going to be looking a little funny the next few weeks. That whole Pittsburgh offense. I've never been a really big fan of Michael Vick as a QB because he was only beating teams with his legs when most teams made him pass. It's when they, all of his team started to lose. He had the one really good passing season with Philly and then nothing else. That was an anomaly, though. So we're going to take a, we're going to see what happens with Antonio Brown. We all know that Antonio Brown has been holding his team down for the last two seasons. If Brown's not giving him 20s, he, he's probably going to be battling for the Limp Dick Award the next couple of weeks. But nonetheless, this week... He won uh, Devontae Freeman, 39.3. Tom Brady continuing his, his streak of 25-plus games. He's just taking, taking the lead by storm right now. No interceptions, 10 touchdowns, one, just the one fumble, but he's balling. This team might be turning it on. Oh, look at Kendall Wright with 16.8. That, uh, that shut, shut me up for a minute, but I still say he's a bum for the most part. But he got his first win of the year on the league by week. For the moments until we see if Drew's going to do anything else. But uh, that's all I have for you guys this week, man. I'm sorry that this video was so long and that it may not have been as good as I, you wanted it to be or even that I wanted it to be. But short notice and like I said, I wasn't trying to redo it all. But looking forward to another good week. The matchup that I like the most this week coming into week four is mm, party all the time versus main lobster sticks out to me yeah that's the only one party all the time versus main lobsters i think that'll be a good one right now they have lobsters is a 31 point favorite wow all right fellas that'll be all until i post some more trash talk later on in the week take it easy